Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine, and this week we're hearing that Albies have come back to Rhode Island. We're also hearing that the Cape Cod Canal had a pretty darn good week with some really nice fish. And we're hearing a greater diversity in sizes of blue fins off the Cape. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's Web Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. So let's start this thing off with the hardtail report. I know there's been a lot of concern in the hardtail world about, you know, how these fish are going to react to all these storms we've had. You know, they showed up in August, and then we had a near direct hit from a hurricane. Then they kind of recovered. Everything kind of came back to normal. Then we got the remnants of Ida, and that messed things up real bad. And then that started to come back together, and then we got... Uh, Larry offshore there, and he put some of the most mountainous giant waves that I have seen in all the years that I've lived near the ocean. And, you know, so all that mixing of the water and all the dirtying of these inshore areas, um, you know, it lowered the water temperature and it made it inhospitable for those species of fish, and they were really hard to come by. Uh, last week, we kind of saw the resurgence. They were coming back in Vineyard Sound. They were starting to filter into Buzzards Bay. Um, what I'm hearing so far this week is that, uh, those spots have cooled off a little bit, but, um, you know, it's kind of balancing out in Rhode Island. So as you're heading into Rhode Island, the first half, you know, of Rhode Island from the Massachusetts border out to Beavertail, pretty scarce. Albies are pretty scarce there. Um, but starting to hear, I heard some reports of fish at Fort Getty. Um, over the last couple of days, there's definitely been fish at the West Wall. And then as you get down toward the Breachways and Watch Hill, that's where the epicenter seems to be uh, right now. I was out there in a boat yesterday, and we put a few albies on the boat while we were looking for some bass. And um, Kwani had fish. Um, Weekapog had fish. I heard about some fish at Watch Hill. We didn't see them there ourselves. So that's where the action is from what I saw. There are good numbers of albies there, but it's not like an all-out guaranteed catch melee. Uh, they're on larger peanuts, and, um, you know, when you find them, and you find them on the top, they are feeding pretty well. They weren't that hard to catch. Um, and then the other place where we're hearing about albies right now is on the north shore of Long Island. So, you know, say from Port, Je Port Jeff, Jeff out to, like, Mount Sinai area, um, that seems to be where they are, although some have made the crossing, so you're seeing a few fish in middle ground, you're seeing some fish in the Norwalk Islands, but it's really just kind of isolated schools so far, uh, but they are there. Uh, so those are the uh, those are the spots where there are albies. If you're looking for Benito, they've been a little tougher to come by overall. Uh, the one place that I'm hearing about them more reliably is, believe it or not, in Cape Cod Bay. Um, like Barnstable Harbor and areas north of there. Uh, seem to have some pretty decent pods of bones and some pretty decent sized fish as well. Um, I know that there's been a disparity out at the uh, out at the vineyard. They're not seeing the numbers that they're used to seeing at this time of the year. And um, there have been a few popping up now and then in Rhode Island, but nothing reliable. It's just been kind of like, a, oh, look at that. There's a, there's a bonito. And then the other hardtail species that has been pretty prominent the last few years, and again this year is Spanish mackerel. The best place to go if you want to get a Spanish mackerel is either the mouth of the Housatonic River or the Millstone Outflow um, in Niantic Bay. Those are the two like epicenters for, for uh, Spanish, but they are getting them. There's been some in the canal, there's been some in Vineyard Sound. Um, there have been a few in uh, around like the Harbor Refuge area, and so they're they're pretty widespread, but if, if that's the fish on your list that you really want to catch, I would head to Connecticut. And now let's just stay in this sort of exotic species vein and talk a little bit about tuna. Uh, there's been a lot of rumors flying around, you know, about tuna of all sizes close to shore in Rhode Island. And some of it's substantiated, some of it's definitely rumors. Uh, but there have been some really big fish taken, you know, two to three miles off of, like, Narragansett. And um, I've seen some legitimate giants, fish over 100 inches. And um, then there's been these rumors of smaller fish, 100-pound class fish, 
40 pound class fish showing up and no one seems to have actually caught them. They're just sighting them. You know, the thing that they always say, definitely they weren't, they definitely weren't Albies. Um, so until somebody actually lands one, um, you know, I would take that with a tiny grain of salt, but also when you hear that many rumors from that many different people, you got to believe that at least some of it has to be true. Uh, so there's definitely tuna action off of Rhode Island and not far out. And there's a lot of bait out there. There's half beaks out there. There's a ton of bunker out there. Uh, there are obviously bluefish out there and um, any number of other things that they might be feeding on. But if you want really reliable tuna fishing, you're going to have to head to the Cape. Um, seems to be centered around more toward P-Town and Stellwagen right now, but they are also moving up into the bay. Um, so that whole little like horseshoe shaped zone out there around the tip of the Cape seems to be where most of the action is. And um, it's, you know, like guys that I know that do it commercially, they're doing very well. Um, and it's been good too to see some recreational size fish in the melee or in the mix out there as well. Um, we got a lot of unsettled weather coming, so you know you may only get one or two weather windows. But if uh, if that's your thing, you got to make those days count. So uh, go out there and check it out. So now let's move over into Massachusetts, and um, you know the species of choice other than Albies right now, Massachusetts still striped bass. Uh, a lot of guys, especially surf fishermen, uh, trying to take full advantage of the fall run. And a lot of the better fall run style fishing has still been north of the Cape. Um, so again, talking to Jim Jukes up there, gives me a report every week. He said it's been a little bit more of a grind. Um, he said the Sunset and Sunrise crew are dealing with a lot more schoolies. It's just acres and acres of bait, but just smaller fish seem to be feeding more during the day. And then at night, you know, you got a better shot at getting a, you know, at least a decent fish. Fish up to close to 20 pounds. He said it's been a real grind for some bigger ones, um, and not too many guys are getting uh, fish of size. Uh, he did say the smaller swimmers and sluggos and needlefish, mostly dark in color, have been uh, go-tos for them um, up on that up in that area. Uh, boat guys are getting a few better fish, you know, live mackerel and things like that, and especially out more toward Gloucester area, um, and. Um, it's it's been a pretty solid fishery up there really since the middle of summer all the way to now um and it seems to be showing no signs of slowing down yet uh water temps are still you know in the in the bass zone and uh, guys are still doing well so that's definitely one place that wouldn't be a bad uh bad place to focus um the outer cape has been a little slower a lot more smaller fish over the last week or so um and then, you know, you're not hearing much from the vineyard right now because the vineyard derby doesn't have, uh, doesn't have striped bass on the menu anymore. Uh, but the other place in Mass that was good is the canal. Uh, guys did very well in the canal for most of last week. Um, on the average, I would say, you know, just judging by like the canal blitzes of lore, these fish were on the smaller side, you know, most of them were in the slot couple, you know, with fish up to 25 pounds. I didn't hear about anything really big unless you go way back into the week before uh, there were some bigger fish taken. But most of these fish, like I said, say between 10 and 25 pounds, action very good, lots of peanut bunker, lots of herring fry, and um, lots of peanut bunker, lots of herring fry, and uh, mackerel moving in on them as well. Now, when we go out to the vineyard, I'm going to kind of go back a little bit to the hardtail thing, but uh, it's just looking over the results for the week. And it's already you know, already some pretty impressive fish on the board. Um, one of the most impressive is a 16-pound bluefish. Uh, but they've, they've logged 16 albies and 14 bonitos so far. And um, it, it seems to be well underway. Lots of bluefish logged. I mean, almost 100 bluefish were, have already been entered. And, um, you know, things are looking good out there. Uh, I know a lot of guys that are headed out there this week to, to go, you know, make their first runs at placing in the Derby. Um, really does sound like a lot of fun one of these years. I'm going to have to get out there and do that. 
Um, but bluefish wise, it's the vineyard has been very good. Um, I know there were some good numbers of decent sized bluefish in the canal as well. It does sound like a lot of those bluefish that were outside the east end of the canal have cleared. They probably came through um, because I know that they, like I said, they were mixing in with the bass quite a bit last week. And, um, you know, Black Sea Bass is now closed in Massachusetts, so let's not forget that. And, um, yeah, that's the story that I've got for you guys in Massachusetts this week. Now, as we move over into Rhode Island, uh, the striper bite has been decent, uh, especially along the Narragansett shoreline, coming out around like um, the Harbor Refuge, and then over toward Beaver Tail and and, um, and Newport as well. Uh, it's been there really hasn't been a lot of really nice fish re reported, at least to me. You know, I'm seeing fish up to a lot of fish in the slot and under slot and then you know the bigger fish the overs are really just topping out in the low 20 pound range not hearing about a lot of 30 pound fish or and i certainly haven't heard of anything really big uh taken over the last week uh some of the spots that have been probably the best places to focus are you know outside brenton reef has been pretty good and then that whole narragansett shoreline from really almost from the jamestown bridge all the way down to point judith there's been Pretty good amount of bass in there, especially early morning or a gloomy day like today. Uh, you get a little wind blowing in there. It gets, uh, you know, it can really whip those fish up. The water temps are still pretty warm. You know, I was out there yesterday looking for bass myself. And um, those, the water temps were in the 70s, the low 70s, 70, 71. And, um, you know, that's still, it's still a little bit warm for like really great top water action. It doesn't mean it's not going to happen, especially at first light or last light. Um, but you know, I think within the next week, it's that area should really turn on, especially if we get all this wind and a lot of cooler nights. And, um, I'm just expecting to see those temps drop and for things to really turn on in all those areas. Uh, bluefish wise, most of what I'm seeing for bluefish in Rhode Island has been on the smaller side. I know there's been some big ones showing up here and there at Block Island, uh, but inshore, it's mostly like little snappers and then what I call smoker bluefish, you know, like fish up to like 23 inches. Um, good numbers of those, you know, a lot of those are taken, uh, going away with uh, your epoxy jigs when you're throwing them into what you think are uh, algae blitzes. But, um, you know, that's really like the, the main story in, as far as uh, they go. Black sea bass fishing in Rhode Island remains phenomenal. Um, we did a little bit of that yesterday when we were waiting for the tide to make up. And, um, you know, we just picked out a random bump on the chart and went out there and dropped, uh, I was, I used a point Jew poji, just dropping it straight to the bottom. And we got a bunch of sea bass up to, I don't know what the biggest one was, maybe 18, 19 inches. Um, but that was just on a random hump. And, you know, as I looked around out there, there were a lot of boats set up on a lot of little pieces and they all seemed to be bending the rod. So, um, Based on what I saw, I can tell you that the sea bass bite has been good. And then based on what I've heard from other people, uh, it's been phenomenal. And the water depth doesn't seem to be as much of a factor right now. Uh, we were getting a lot of the fish. We got in like 30 feet of water. Um, and I've heard of guys doing well out in 100 feet of water. And, you know, even some fish coming from way up shallower, like 15. So, I mean, if you're looking for sea bass, I think the main thing is just to find the strongest piece of structure. And um, really that whole S South County shoreline has got fish and then Newport is always loaded up with, uh, with sea bass. So those areas all should be very good. Uh, we're not gonna get a report this week from Watch Hill Outfitters. They, weren't a, they didn't have time to put their uh, video together, but I did talk to Harrison. Uh, he said they're seeing lots of albies the last couple of days, a lot of larger peanut bunker and a pretty good run of bass in that 20 to 35 inch range not a lot of really big ones um some of the better fish are coming from like watch hill reefs at night on live eels guys three way in through there but uh the bigger fish don't seem to be showing up too often during the day uh, but good action and you're all you're obviously going to have those smaller bluefish mixed in as well uh fluke fishing i really haven't heard much it's really really slowing down now um and it's going to come to a fast end if it hasn't come to an end already and then the last thing that's really starting to 
catch on now is the black fishing. It's getting better and better. These fish are up shallow. Um, the limit doesn't change until October 15th, so it's still a three fish limit. Um, but I mean, I've even seen guys getting some nice tog just dropping epoxy jigs on uh, structure while they're waiting for the albies to pop back up. And uh, so there's a lot of different ways to catch them. There's a lot of them around and that fishery's good and it's only gonna be getting better from here on out. And that's the, uh, that's the story of Rhode Island this week. And now as we slide through into Connecticut, um, there's a lot of alby wishing going on in the Eastern Sound, but they just don't seem to want to make that turn right now. Um, pretty confident that they will, um, but they just haven't made that turn yet. The only place, like we said in the intro, it seems to be on that North Shore and then a couple of smaller pods showing up, you know, way out west, Norwalk, Milford area. Uh, but in, in their place, you know, we're seeing a lot of stripers. Striper action has been very good in Connecticut. In fact, I think right now Connecticut might be the best place to go if you're looking to just tie into some bass and to have a shot at a really big one um there's been more bigger fish reported from Connecticut than Massachusetts and Rhode Island combined over the last week um so one of the things that's happening is we keep getting all this rain right and that's you know blowing out the rivers especially the Connecticut River and the Connecticut River is loaded with bunker and so when all this fresh water comes down, that bunker goes and gets out of there. And so that has been setting up a pretty good bite, um, you know, for at least a couple days after those rains come through. Uh, guys are getting some bigger fish, and I've heard of some really nice fish, some fish up into the 40-pound range, uh, mostly taken at night, mostly taken on chunks or eels. Um, but, you know, a few nicer fish taken on plugs as well. And um, that's, you know, that's like a, that's a nice little reliable pattern that you can count on and hasn't been a lot of re reliable patterns this year. Um, the race still has good numbers of bass and lots of bluefish. And then the thing, other thing that's still happening is there's still these blitzes of bass that are showing up from the Connecticut River to Niantic and then all the way out to the Thames and even beyond. Um, it's not like one solid blitz from one end to that range to the other, but they're popping up in that area. So if you're out in the boat and you're just cruising for bass, you're just looking for birds, uh, you are going to find them in that area. And, um, and there's been a fair number of like decent sized fish, you know, fish up into the, uh, at least into the mid to upper teens, you know, up to like 18 pounds. Uh, a lot of fish being taken on top water plugs, like the, um, oh, like the seven inch dock, like uh, jumping minnows have been doing really well. Um, the charter grade slider from Hoagie has been catching a lot of fish. <clears throat> Excuse me. And there's lots and lots and lots and lots of bait in that area. There's just peanut bunker galore. This has been a phenomenal peanut bunker year. And that particular stretch just seems to have the best clash of stripers and, uh, and peanuts really throughout the entire range that I cover. Um, and so that would be a place that I would really put in some focus if you're looking for bass. Um, if you're looking for a really big one, I'd probably spend more of my time in the race. And then there's also been some random pods of bigger fish out west. We'll probably hear more about that from Max at the end. Uh, bluefish wise, it seems like a lot of those fish that were off of Milford and Clinton uh, last week have moved up into the Western Sound. Guys are getting them, you know, a lot of diamond jig fish being taken, and Max will tell you a lot about that too, but way out West. And then um, there's been a lot of smaller bluefish around the mouth of the Connecticut River and mixing in with those bass in those blitzes. And then of course the gut always seems to have some bluefish. And from what I've been hearing, there's a mix of small bass and some decent bluefish, like five to 10 pound bluefish in the gut as well. Uh, black sea bass action has been very good. Uh, guys doing especially well in that same zone that I always seem to focus on. You know, you leave Niantic Bay and you head just due south until you get into some of that deeper water. There's a lot of like crazy little ledges and stuff in there. And, um, and that's been the area where I've been hearing the most uh, positive reports. I know that TJ from Rock and Roll Charters has been doing pretty well on sea bass. And he's been doing very well on stripers and also on, on scup, which have been phenomenal all year. 
Um, and he's he's out more toward Clinton. He's you know he's fishing Southwest Reef and Six Mile and some of those smaller ones in that area. Um, but the fishing has been very good in the in his zone there and uh, decent decent amount of those smoker sized bluefish in there as well. And now I'm going to throw things over to Max from Fisherman's World. We're going to hear what's happening out in the Western Sound. Hey everyone, Max here with another local fishing report. The striped bass fishing this week has improved a lot. These fish are keying in on snappers, peanut bunker, and all the small bait around. First light is definitely the best bet, and these fish are being caught mostly on top water, plug-in, and blind plug-in structure around the islands. Work in places like Kakini Shoals, George's Rock area, inside Sheffield, and Green's Ledge. The blue fishing remains red hot, and these fish are being taken on the diamond jig at 28C and 11B. To our east at middle ground, there's a big, a big concentration of big fish too and also there's been nice striped bass mixed in. For false albacore, they've been showing up here and there, but this should improve as the month goes on. Places to look are Kakini Shoals, Middle Ground, 28C, and the backside of the islands. Sea bass remains red hot, but these fish are definitely being caught in deeper water. So try to get on a deep water wreck, and these fish will take diamond jigs, high-low rigs tipped with clams or squid. Porgy fishing remains good from the beaches and from the boat. Flounder fishing, so-so, it's not really been good this whole year. Guys that are really trying to catch some fluke, they're really pounding these areas and they're working through a lot of shorts to find their limit. But if you're gonna get out there, this time of year you can find them shallow or deep with all the small bait. So remember to keep drifting and if you catch a keeper, mark the spot because odds are there's more. Places like Can 24, Can 26, and 28C. This is a good time of year to drift live snappers for fluke. Thank you and good luck. And that's the story I have for you guys around this week. Um, now I'm just gonna Give you the breakdowns of the tournaments so let's start with the coastal kayak clash this week in the coastal kayak clash it was all about justin oser i think he took exception to losing the top spot last week because he came in strong with two category leading fish in blackfish and hardtail his blackfish was 20 and three quarter inches his hardtail which was a false albacore was 27 and a quarter inches which is also good enough to lead for now the fish of the month category there's still plenty of time left in the month to win fish of the month and there's still lots of time left in the tournament to take the lead away from justin get in your kayaks keep those hooks sharp and see what you can catch we'll see you guys next week and let's finish up with the dream boat some serious dream boat activity from long island this week joseph yam moves up from third place to second place with the entry of his 6.48 pound weak fish but the larger weak fish entry came in from ryan murphy also from long island with a 7.25 pound putting him in the fourth place entry in weak fish a second place 3.5 pound sea robin was entered in by andreas brundler and a 2.9 pound sea robin was entered in by mark zaliski rhode island checked in with a 9.4 pound tog from luca raza where is jersey well maybe next week the Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi species fishing competition with a chance to win a new Steiger Craft Center console powered by Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Subscribe now to the Fisherman Magazine to be part of the action. And as I say every week, you know, if you're just checking out the video, we really appreciate the eyeballs, um, but we'd really appreciate a like and a subscribe. So if you can just click those two buttons down there and then maybe hit that bell. So you get a notification every time we post something new. And if you're not a subscriber, head over to the website. Check out the free content we've got there. We cover everything from Delaware all the way to Maine and every species you can think of in that range. We do freshwater, we do saltwater, kayak, stand-up paddleboard, offshore, and, and travel as well. So uh, come check us out. Come see what we have to offer. And uh, hopefully the reports help you out. We'll see you guys next week.